And the Father, we want to thank you for the opportunity of worshiping you within this house of prayer. Go before us now in this act of worship, and may we worship you now in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Enjoy hymn 103, 103.
page 97, and then we continue onwards from page 101. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. Hallelujah. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor, together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping, they shall come, and with consolations, I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water, in a straight path, in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him, and will keep him as a shepherd a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob, and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on a height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice and dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 84.
written in the epistle to the Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 6 and 15 to 19. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in, in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption of his children through Jesus Christ according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him. So that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for all who believe? The word of the Lord. Him for a gradual make a seven, nine seven. rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard of this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, 
he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judah, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. And Herod secretly called the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. They, when, they had, when they had heard the king, they set out. There ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the gospel of Christ. Epiphany. Epiphany, yes, the season of Epiphany. But tomorrow also ends the holiday, the holiday season for some, especially those of you who are part of the primary and secondary school system. Even though, yes, the students go back on Tuesday, nevertheless, most of our teachers, if not all of our teachers, go back tomorrow. But I do hope that all would have had an enjoyable and reflective Christmas season for the most part. And uh, let me take this opportunity to personally offer you best wishes for this new year of 2020 that is already five days old. As we close off this season of Christmas on this Sunday before the Day of Epiphany, we just had as our gospel reading uh, that very familiar account of the wise men from the east, east and their gift-giving ceremony. 
It is believed that the practice or custom of gift giving at Christmas time was really inspired by this event in history. And so our, our giving of gifts should remind us of this very important event of the wise men giving special gifts to baby Jesus and gifts that would have revealed who they recognized Jesus to be. And whenever we reflect on this particular gift given, I believe, my friends, that God is also desirous of encouraging us as Christians and as the church as a whole to be mindful that we also have gifts to offer to our King, Jesus Christ, our Lord. As we recognize him for who he is, and also as we declare him to the world around us of who Jesus really is. When we consider once again that familiar story of the wise men, we are told there that the gifts they presented were gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And it is to be understood that, that these gifts that were given were very precious gifts. They were by no way or by no means cheap gifts, but very precious and expensive gifts. Of the three gifts, of course, we, you would recognize that once you mention the word gold, automatically you identify gold as being something what? Very precious, something very expensive. But somehow, very often, we, we don't really recognize what is considered to be frankincense, or do we recognize what is referred to as myrrh? But nevertheless, from our research on these three gifts, they were considered to be very precious gifts of Jesus' day. And also very considered to be specially chosen and presented by these wise men because of who they recognized Jesus to be as the King of the Jews. You know, the best types of gifts that we can give anyone are those gifts that reflect their personality. Those gifts that we recognize that will be of great use to them. Those gifts that we believe will suit them or what we believe that they really need from us. That's generally how we go about deciding what gifts we should get maybe for our parents, for our children, for our friends or other family members. We generally try to put some thought into the type of gifts that we would think that they will love or that we believe that they deserve or that we believe that will represent who they are. One of my close friends, for example, gave me eight purple socks. And she told me that she went out of her way looking diligently for these songs. Because she said as a bishop, I should not be wearing any color socks. I should not be wearing the, the black socks or, or the gray socks or the brown socks, but rather I should be wearing purple socks. I will show you that I even have on a pair right now. <laughs> but I will leave that for later if you want to see. But the wise men, my friends, were, were doing the very same thing. Through their gifts, having given great thought as to who they were now going to search for in terms of the king of the Jews, having seen this revealed to them by way of a star, they also gave thought as to what they will offer from their treasure chests that will be fit for such a king. In presenting the gold, they were expressing that they recognize that this child will become a great king, one who will establish a kingdom. In their presenting the frankincense, which is incense that, for example, what we would use occasionally in our worship sessions, they were expressing that he was one deserving of worship as being God with us, 
of God's presence here on earth. And they presented him the myrrh, which is fragrant oil for embalming those who would have died, preparation for their burial. They recognized that he who came as a human being will suffer death and be anointed with that oil for burial. And so these gifts, in essence, were offered to declare Jesus as King and also as God incarnate in human form. You know, like the wise men, we also as Christians are to be practicing this level of gift giving. Gift giving for we all have gifts that we can offer to declare who Jesus really is in our lives and who Jesus is to be in the lives of others around us. And right here in St. Ambrose, I know of some of those gifts that are being used to declare and in service of our Lord in church and for the wider community in which it serves. They are, for example, in recognition that our Lord is to be worshipped, that our Lord is to be served, that our Lord is to be adored, a number of you have already dedicated yourselves to offer your musical talent, either on the organ or by way of the steel pans. Your singing ability to lift your voices in the choir. Your acting ability to offer dramatic presentations and skits. Your dancing ability to offer liturgical expression to the sounds. Your love for offering service and be servants in the sanctuary. Because you need to know that you are there as a servant of God. Your sociability to welcome and your concern to care for all who enter this place of worship, whether as visitor or member. Your technological knowledge to develop broadcast videos on what's happening at St. Ambrose. You see, I've been following you very closely. No wonder there's a camera probably here focusing on me at this time. But there are not only those of you who have been given your gifts in relation to your talents or aptitude, but also those of you who have been given to our Lord your gifts of time and treasures in recognition that there also needs to be these that are given to our King in the establishment of his kingdom of love and care here on earth. There are those of you, for example, who give up your time and treasures to meet and minister to the needs of those who are less fortunate than ourselves and who are suffering and in need, and in need of attention by offering them services such as health care checks, school supplies, educational and self-development programs, and gift hampers. So you have been offering some gifts already. One other thing that I believe indeed that, however, that our God even wants us to consider at this time that we can draw from the gift given of the wise men as observed in our gospel reading for this morning is that they didn't all give gold. They didn't give only of one kind, but they gave a variety of gifts. They told gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And I'm certain that in the eyes of God, they were all equally important in declaring who Jesus was. And so even as we offer our various gifts within our church, whether inside of the church, outside of the church, they're all equally important in declaring who Jesus really is. And this points to the fact that God has given us as well a variety of gifts to offer in his service for the building up of his kingdom. And we are encouraged to always be in the habit of gift giving when it comes to giving to the Lord. 
And gift given is not out of seeking anything in return. That's also something we can note about the attitude that was a part of this giving of the gold, frankincense, and myrrh by the wise men, strangers to Jesus. They were not given in hope of anything for them in return. They gave out of recognition of who Jesus was, who Jesus came to be for the world. Unfortunately, we at times do practice gift given in hope of something in return for ourselves. Or we only give if we have already gotten something or we expect to get something very soon. Just think for a moment with me on how at times, my friends, we, we decide to whom we should give gifts during the Christmas season. Very often some of us start by thinking back as to, well, who would have given us something last year? Because, you know, if they had given us something last year, they may very well come and give us something again this year. And so to save the quote-unquote embarrassment of, of not having anything to give them when they come and buy us, we prepare ourselves by making sure that for well, those who probably gave us something next, last year, we make sure we have something to give them in return. Or, we are thinking about those who we want to see, we want them to see us in a good light. So we give them something hoping that we are looked upon as being a nice and a, and a very generous person and to find their favor. However, our gift giving is really to be motivated by our love and our care and our recognition of who that person really is, the value of that person, the importance of that person in our lives, and nothing to do with what we can get in return. The same is true in terms of our gift given to Jesus as Christians. When we offer our time, when we offer our talents, when we offer our treasures, we are to be offering them out of our love for him, out of our recognition of who he is, like the wise men. Not to get anything in return for ourselves, not for recognition even if that may come by the way, not to hope for any reward, brownie points, or personal blessings from God. You know, unfortunately sometimes we, we go along with the notion that if we give to God, what? Well, what will happen? You will get from him, innit? <clears throat> so we think the more money that we give in the collection plate, what? Well, the more blessings we will get. And sometimes that's the gospel that is preached. But I don't believe that God wants us to give of our gifts to Him or in service of Him because of what we can possibly get in the future. But rather we recognize again who He is, what He has given us to use in His service, and we use it to the best of our ability. We give of our best as the wise men gave of their best. God is calling all of us, my friends, as Christians to, in essence, follow the example of those wise men. Having found Jesus for ourselves, having invited Jesus into our lives and recognizing him as our Lord Emmanuel, as the King of our lives, we should be moved then to offer whatever gifts we have in service of him, our time, our talents, and our treasures. We should bring these from our treasure chests, whatever we have on our hearts, within our lives, not in seek of any reward, but simply because we want to see his kingdom of love and care established here on earth, here in our community, here in our nation, in our world. We want to see Jesus lifted high. 
Recently, one of your members, my MC for this morning, Clyde Thomas, you know that name? Not Clyde, not Father Clyde, but Clyde Thomas, the son of yours. I did say anything to him this morning because I'm not going to preach for him this morning. <laughs> He used his gift to produce something important for our diocese. As I'm sure you're well aware, he recently would have graduated with a BA in Fine Arts, first class honors. And I want to congratulate him even now for that achievement. And knowing this, I troubled his father about having him produce a logo to go with our diocesan focus for this year 2020 that is entitled Mission 2020 God's Gathering. Have you heard about it? Oh, you have. That's good. This is in relation, of course, to what is going to be happening in our nation as a whole, the fact of the government's initiative of be gathering 2020. But I believe that we as a church have to emphasize not just we gathering, but the church is about God's gathering. And so this is going to be our mission focus for this year, where we're going to be having events that emphasize, as we capitalize on what is happening in the movement that is happening in our nation, of how we as a church are going to be promoting God's mission of gathering his people to himself. And so with this talent of Brother Clyde, he has provided our diocese with a beautiful logo. And I brought it with me so you can see. So whenever you see this, know that it's a corner of St. Ambrose from among you, entitled Mission 2020, God's Gathering. And it's very symbolic, it has a symbol of Barbados on it, but more importantly, it has a cross with people holding it as they're gathering to Christ. And you see a shield there, that's a shield, that's our diocesan shield, to emphasize that this is the Anglican Church's movement and call to respond to God's mission 2020 of gathering God's people back to Himself. As a member of your church, this is something St. Ambrose can be proud of. And again, Clyde, this time personally, I want to thank you for using that gift, for that gift given to our diocese at this time. So this will be used on our promotion of all the parish events across our diocese from St. Lucy to St. Michael. Already it is on a flyer to advertise a movie under the stars that is going to be happening in St. Lucy. But he's just one person. I already mentioned some of the other gifts that are already used in, used in your church. But this is the gift given we all, we all need to be involved in, within our church and our nation, given of our gifts towards the mission of God's church, given of our time, our talents, and our treasures to enhance our worship experience, to improve our sharing and proclaiming of God's word, to empower our young people with, with life skills. To improve the moral and spiritual and social development of our nation. To transform unjust, unjust structures and promote peace within our society that has become so violent. 
and to protect our environments and enable all people to experience God's love for them. It requires all of us in the gift-given mission. It is through such gift-given by every member of this church that this church alone in St. of St. Ambrose will truly rise even higher this year to become that beacon that Christ is calling you to be in this community. I therefore encourage each and every member to be as the wise men were, to give up your best, to give up your gifts to the Master, that the offering of our gifts will reveal who Jesus is in our lives. And I'm sure we are familiar with, with the parable that Jesus shares about the kingdom of God, where he shares that by doing this to the least of one of my brothers and sisters, you are doing it as unto me. Where he's emphasizing that indeed when you visit this, those who are sick or those who are in prison, if you give to those who are in need and so forth, these are the gift-given aspects of our lives that Jesus himself is encouraging us to do. That in doing that for others, we are actually giving gifts to our Lord. Let us then be faithful in gift giving from our treasure chest. Given of our time, given of our talent, given of our treasures throughout this year as God continues to work his purpose out for our lives, for our church, for our communities in which we serve, and especially for our nation. There is much treasure in our chest to give. So let's offer them as to the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, 
You may all kinds of people, even people like me, in your love and gather them all into your church. As we gather our people this day, help me to serve them in a Christ-like manner, even as your son served those who gathered about him. Make me prayerful and patient, helpful and understanding. And may I radiate the joy that faith brings as I serve their needs. Give me your strength to support my fellow ministers. May all who assemble to celebrate our common faith in the risen Savior be glad of heart for being here and for having encountered your Son in one another. In our priests at the tables of the book and the bread and through the ministry of ushers like me, I ask this in Jesus' name. Lord, rule of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to your will through Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. We say we have no sin. We deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness.
everyone.
After the service, we have our family breakfast. And so all are invited after the service to the church hall for our family breakfast. I would like to say thank you so very much to all those who contributed in one way or the other to the family breakfast. Um, however, I just want to single out um, Hansha Ellis. Um, I made a request uh, to someone in there um, for a contribution towards the, the breakfast and they readily responded in the affirmative. Um, so I would like to say thank you so very much to Christopher Donnell at Hansha Ellis for responding um, so graciously um, to our request for assistance for our parish. I, I, as, as I've already said to you in the past, when, when persons support us, uh, we must uh, express our gratitude for uh, the support that we have received. Okay. Okay. Let me take this opportunity to welcome all our visitors with us this morning. We are delighted to have you wish been with us here in St. Ambrose, the first Sunday of the year, and we look forward to your continued uh, presence here at St. Ambrose. Just a reminder, all those who are interested in being confirmed, uh, please uh, uh, bring forward your name so that we can arrange to have the confirmation class started. Okay, we will be looking at the possibility of having confirmation sometime next year, not this year. So the class will be this year and we'll have confirmation next year. So those of you who are interested in uh, confirmation, please uh, do come forward with the, the names and information. Speaking about confirmation, this week is the anniversary of the, the last confirmation that was held here at uh, St. Ambrose. Some of our servers and uh, some of the young persons sitting here, it's the anniversary of confirmation on the 7th. And so we congratulate them on the anniversary of their confirmation. This week is also the birthday of our organist Lance. Uh, also, it's the birthday of uh, uh, Joy and Williams. And we wish Lance and uh, Joy and a very blessed and happy birthday and those who are celebrating any form of anniversary, congratulations to you as well. As the Bishop mentioned, the school reopens this week. We pray for our students and our, our teachers. As you see on our service leaflet, there is an ordination to be taking place in this diocese. That is going to take place on the 18th um, at St. Mary's at 5 p.m. Uh, Rosalind Hannah Johnson, a former Methodist uh, minister, will be ordained for the Holy Order of Deacons as part of the Anglican Church. We welcome her to the Anglican family and we look forward to her uh, ordination. There are several information there from the bishop's desk that you can read and note for yourself. Please remember that we have just a small amount of calendars remaining. So after the service, please do remember we have a small amount of calendars remaining and uh, you can purchase them uh, after, the, after the service. You will find all the information that you need uh, about the diocese and the feasts and festivals of the churches here in our calendar. In his sermon, the bishop uh, mentioned that the diocese is focused for this year. Uh, Mission 2020 God's Gathering, and as I said to you, I um, expect the uh, Bishop will give you some information on that when he comes to St. Ambrose. And those of you who are observant would realize that the small text below our heading have been changed. Do you realize that? Have been changed. What we have been using is, oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his steadfast love endures forever. Psalm 101, sorry, 107 verse 1. What has it changed to? And that is what is going to be on our service reflect for the entire year. 
Mission 2020, God's Gathering. Now, I was tempted, instead of using the clip art of the three wise men, I was tempted to use the diocesan logo that was developed. And I said, you know what, um, I am not sure yet um, if I should go ahead and use it, so let me wait and hear what the bishop says first. I know I have permission to do so. And, and so um, we would use the diocesan logo uh, for uh, Mission uh, 2020, God's Gathering, because that would be our focus as a church for this year. And um, the, the bishop did not mention it uh, in, his, in his message, um, but that focus will not end at the end of 2020. 2020 is just the beginning of, of the process, and we're looking at going way beyond um, 2020 with that focus of gathering God's people back to him. Okay? And so uh, that was the brainchild of the bishop. Thank you so very much, Bishop, for that focus. And we at St. Ambrose will work with you and the diocese uh, for that. Uh, I have been told that uh, Sister Sinclair is in church. Where is She's sitting in the back. Oh, how wonderful it is. She has not been with us for a while. She's been having some health challenges, and I would have had to visit her at home. And she is in church. It is wonderful to have you in church with us this morning. Thank you, Pastor. No, whatever else I have to share with you, I will share with you in the church hall. The Lord be with you. Offering him 362. 362. Oh, uh -huh. 
God Almighty, everlasting God, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of your Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore we praise you, join in our voice of the angels and archangels and the Father company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
time.
Blessed are the Lord, be to the Father.